Hello everybody, Steffi here from The Makers and you can see lots of colourful um, wool bats here which are going to be turned into the little fishies garland today and that is why you're here um, hopefully watching the live stream on um, on on this Tuesday which is a Tuesday in May and it feels like it's a Tuesday in... Ah! Okay, okay, just, just bear with me, bear with me. I knew there's always something that... Um, I haven't done, I was only thinking today I haven't done a blooper for ages and I've just realized I've got a double sound going on here. So I've just turned that down um, and uh, you can only hear me once. Thank God, that would be terrible hearing me twice. It's bad enough once. Anyway, going back to what we're doing, we're doing um, this lovely little fish's garland, which um, is needle felted um, from the exotic wool mix, which you can still get. Um, and best of all, we've got a, a special offer on at the moment, which only works from today um, until Sunday, the 23rd. So it is a, a temporary um, special discount and it's for our Mayhem in May. And, and that is also the discount code, which is uh, Mayhem2, because we've already had one on kits, but this one is um, on on um, on wool and anything felting, wool, luxury fibers, curls, wool mixes. So it's uh, basically you put... Um, four in your shopping basket and one of them which will be the cheapest you get for free so it's a really good opportunity to build your stash and you certainly can um, use the exotic wool mix for that as well but I have more I have more I have more um, because we're also planned we've also planned our um, June live streams and one of them is going to be the beehive here behind me I don't know if you can see it it's um and this is all made from the bee wool mix well, in fact, there is, um, now what do I say, 140 grams in it, and I haven't even used 30 grams out of this whole one. So you can see that you can make lots, maybe maybe a couple of hives or more. I'm only showing this um, to you first because get that in your um, special offer that counts until Sunday the 23rd. If you need to know the exact code, then find us on Facebook. Um, I'm sure Emma will also post it here. She's here today supporting me on the YouTube um, comments, so you can find it there. But remember, it's only valid until the 23rd of May 2021. That also reminds me that you can get this um, wool mix for your wet felted flowers, which uh, we did last week, which was great fun. So that's in there as well. Um, what else um, might I be able to tell you to get? Oh, your Angelina fiber, all of that, because we're doing a, a dragonfly tutorial in June. I'll tell you later again, but um, I'm just needed to get that out of my system because I'm excited about it. So um, in any case, let's say hello to some of the people who are here. But before I do that, I will just show you what today's price is. So today we, um, you can win yourself one of these clover magnet pin caddies, which actually they are wide enough or long enough, whichever way you want to look at it, to fit the felting needles. I'll show you in a minute for real. And um, it is a purple color, so it's slightly more purple. What you see here on the picture, the, ours, um, the ones that you're getting are purple, I think. And um, to get this, Tell us, if you could fish for compliments, what would they be? Tell us what compliments some you would like somebody to um, to pay you and how would you go about it? So fish for compliments, this is this is what we would like you to do. And um, this is the caddy I was talking about. So you do get some pins with it. Some of you might already be using it because it's um, really super useful for sewing, of course. What I love about it is that if you ever drop a needle, I'm just going to drop a needle here like that you can literally just it picks it up so if you've dropped it on the carpet you can just hover the carpet with um with this uh, magnet and you don't need to um you know dig with your fingers all around it um it does pin it let's try and see if it pick, pick. oh look oh look at that okay you've got to see this overhead so if you imagine it's um fallen onto the carpet like that which is stuck into it, so I'm, it is literally sticking in there. It even, it's so strong, it pulls it off and pulls it out of the carpet. How amazing is that? And um, and then if you've got, um, if you want to use it as a storage, what you do have to do is it doesn't sort of um, pick them up flush with the, with the outside, but you can just put the lid on gently from that direction and the needles are perfectly secure inside there so they are uh, they, it does fit the whole length of a standard 
size needle and you can win this but you can also buy it from us of course so you know if you if you if you want it you can have it you don't need to just win it and that is up for grabs today so do tell us what compliments you are fishing for today during this live stream and of course this will be repeated on Thursday and I'm have successfully um avoided the um the, the 18th today's the 18th so this will be repeated on the 20th at 7 p.m on facebook so it will be um it, somebody from us will be there watching it with with you and you can comment too and you can win yourself one of these caddies as well right that um is probably oh no i was gonna say hello right let's say hello um so we've got emma here from the makers today who is supporting the stream we've got sandra there and um ashley diane jane um, Diane says, "Every everyone ready to do some fishing, absolutely." Um, and um, Jane says, "I'm thinking of making a fish pond with a structural felt to make a ooh, magnetic fishing game." Oh, I love that! Yeah, put a little magnet inside the fish, like the ones you can buy, but these will be a bit more funky looking. Oh, I like that idea! Little fishing rod. Um, I have an idea who you might be making this for, Jane. Um, Carol says, hello, um, hi Steffi, Emma and Amul. Ashley says, great idea, Jane, are you going to make a gnome too to decorate? Absolutely. Maybe you need a fishing gnome. Maybe he, you, the, the, the gnome needs to hold a fishing um, rod. Um, we've got Awkward Prawn there and um, Eva is there. And we have got Erika there. So Eva from Norway, Erika from the Netherlands. Um, you prob there's probably other people from um <laughs> or other places but I don't know where everybody lives. I'm not I'm not a stalker, I promise. Um Catherine is there. Well I know where Catherine lives. <laughs> Serena is there, Karen, um Diana, um and um who else? Kathy is there. Um Ah, Kathy is already um, coming out with um, compliments that she is fishing for. Compliments on my needle felt projects. And yes, there are instructions in the um, in this bee mix. They show you exactly how to make a bee. They come with every single bee mix. They're a very simple instruction sheet, just one page, but it shows you from beginning to end how to make the bee. And then, of course, during the tutorial, I will make the beehive with you and, uh, and the bees as well. But the bees take literally um a minute in comparison to the beehive so yes you get all of this 140 gram of wool um our lovely portuguese merino which fells down beautifully and really super fast and then you have the golden yellow and the mouse white australian merino butts in there as well so that's um that's covered but we're here to do fish not bees today so let's get started so you should have um i haven't printed it off the website myself i've got my handwritten and hand drawn version here you should have on the website um something similar like that but it's done properly because emma did it not like me hand drawing it you've got a template and you've got um your table of how i've colored the fish in and um i've done it in a certain in a certain way because the wool mix comes in a certain way so if you if you lay the colors out that way there is a system to it but i i'll explain that in a minute so you need some water soluble paper which we sell in two different sizes this is one big pack um 100 by 90 centimeters which is really useful because you can just put it back in the bag zip it up and keep it or you can um, buy the smaller size um as well of course you need a pencil and you need um your template of course i'm just going to take this off there i will be coming back to that in a minute and i'm just going to go overhead excuse my handwriting on this um sheet there but i'm interested in the template here so when you've got your water soluble paper sorry i've drawn a few already because um i was super prepared today but i didn't think to switch off my sound on my um second device here all you need to do is take the water soluble paper be be quite um economic with the sizing so have enough that fits on there you need at least I would say well the fish is about 10 centimeters long so you might need 11 centimeter of water soluble paper and then about um, I can't remember what we said now in the instructions but let's just measure the width of this fish um, it's about four centimeters wide so go for five centimeters so 11 by um, four centimeters five centimeters as an absolute minimum if you had 12 centimeters it might be better and then you need a, a pencil or um, a biro and you literally just trace the shape underneath 
the water soluble paper. I'm tracing all of it. It's really easy to do. It's the simplest thing on the planet. Just trace around the water soluble paper. Do not use um, a felt tip pen. Um, this is water soluble paper and if you've got a very juicy felt tip pen it will dissolve it. I try and keep my pencil line as faint as possible and magically you have now got a second fish here on um, your water soluble paper. So the next thing you're going to do is I'm going to use my super sharp little embroidery scissors which we do sell on our website as well so if you haven't got any small sharp scissors these are particularly helpful later when we have to cut around the shape. I just cut one off, one template off here. Now I do want to show you something because we talk about the earth mat all the time and of course they, they do get quite covered in fluff, which um, this one is, is clean at the moment, but I did see some very disgusting looking ones. And I thought I'd just show you, this is actually the backs, the back, um, the pa the um, the base mat, which is the, but you can use it really well for flat needle felting. So we have two brushes. One is the, is this brush here. And um, sometimes you, I always thought maybe you just need to apply a lot of pressure. You don't, you can also just do like little, little um, short, um, scrapes like I'm doing here and then um, go in all directions so that you're you're literally pulling the fibers out that you've successfully stabbed in there while you were working on your project and then you can just um, sort of get rid of a lot of this excess fiber that's just making your mat um, well it contaminates your mat with fibers which in itself is not a problem as long as these fibers don't come off when you're needle felting something that doesn't really want to have these um, foreign fibers in there. Foreign fibers, what the heck, where did that come from? You know what I'm talking about, these um, different colors. And then, um, well, you can keep that if you like, but put it out for the birds. They build they build it into their nest. So that's on the, on the basic um, mat. And then I've got a really, oh, there's a really bad one. Oh, that's the soft mat. Let's see if we can clean this one up. How exciting is that? So we've got two brushes. The other one is this one here. Oh, still, still dirty. I haven't cleaned that up from earlier. This one is sort of a squidgy, squidgy thing. Um, it's it's got um little, I don't know, squidgy spikes on either side. And with this one, um, I, I quite like it because you can sort of mold it more around your hand, and then again, just Sometimes you have to w work in small in small um, areas first to get the, the worst off and uh, do it from all directions and then just get your, it, this one here collects it all on the brush whereas the other one, it leaves it on the mat. So you have to clean this up. Um, there is a, a price difference as well. The, the little round one is a lot cheaper than the big one. And of course, the little one is a bit more mobile as well. You can even crumple it up and stick it in your pocket. It folds up quite small. I, I think in balance, I probably prefer the big one, especially if you're having to clear a large area. But if you've only got a small earth mat, then do go for the small one if you don't want to invest in a large one um, in this large brush. Um, so there you go all this you can see there's nothing left here but it's all on the mat whereas the other one um, you have to pick it off the the mat right that's enough fussing now let's use that nice clean one that I've cleaned already here we go so now the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to start coloring in this fish and um, the way to do that is so with my color I've got my different wool colors here and if you have them in the right order, which basically means that you, um, it doesn't matter which way round, but you have your, um, so you have your seashell shimmer. This is actually, is that the right way around? So let's do it proper. Neon pink, flamingo, neon yellow, um, neon green, blue green shimmer goes there. Blue green shimmer, turquoise is right, aqua and then seashell shimmer. If you have them in that order, the way that you make um, the colors of the fish is that you say you start with, uh, let's say you start with flamingo. You start with flamingo, which means that the fin is, fin is the wool right to it, or uh, my right to it. And the, um, um, what do you call it, eyes and gills are, is the wool on the other side to it. And that's how it works. So with a yellow um, fish, it will have um, flamingo fins and it will have a neon green um, eyes and gills. That's that is the principle of how, of how I've coloured in the fish, basically. So, 
I'm going to take the basket off and we're going back to um, the main project here. I take a wisp of your, so I've taken flamingo now, and then um, you're going to uh, use a coarse needle. It's best to work with um, small quantities. So start by, um, you're not going to not gonna know where the gill line is or the headline is of the fish, but start, start by felting the fiber into the center first. So at the moment it's, it's, it's inside the shape, but I haven't shot um, outside the outer line yet and then um, try and work your way really close to that outer line by stabbing into it. You should be able to see it through the wool because it's very wispy. If you can't see it you might have too much wool there and once you've done this then you just flip the wool that's outside that line over and stab it into the center and that makes a really neat um, line and you do the same on um, the other side and then you work your way along the, the fish. Now what you need to remember is that these um, fins they need to be somehow connected to um, the um, the main body because there's water soluble paper and if we're uh, washing the water soluble paper out these fins will sort of if they're just completely separate from the rest of the wool they will kind of dissolve um, and then they just be separated. So we need to make sure that the fins somehow spill into um, into the wool without covering the wool up over the top if you're following the principle that I have followed. So I've got my flamingo um, colored um, fi fish. If you print off that uh, list on the website, you will know that your fins need to be um, neon pink. So um, the fins we're making are really again we're making them really thin so you in theory you could have done the fins first but this is fine and it's the same principle felt it on flip the um, outer fibers in towards the center felt it down and now you've got a nice um, a bit overlapping here and now I'm going to put the flamingo wool over the top so that now I know that these two are connected and I'm going to do the same with the fin here at the base. So I'm just going to color that in. It really works um, out well if you are um, if you just take your time and do it. This is quite a, um, a nimble fingered project. The finer, um, not uh, the more detailed you work, the more sophisticated your project will look which is always a challenge for me because I'm quite an impatient crafter. So I just want to get it down and get it done. What you will notice is that if you're felting flat, especially on water soluble paper, you are actually fastening this onto your mat. So you have to keep lifting this off the mat regularly um, to make sure that it's it doesn't get stuck on there. And um, then the, the, the tail the tail end is the same color as the whole of the fish so I'm not um, using any other color for this it's just the main one and once you've um, felt it down one side so felt all the way to the tail now this this next bit is different from anything that we've done with um, water soluble paper before um, because these fish are 3d they're not actually flat um, you're going to have there's a bit of vegetable matter in there it needs to come out. Often when you've got vegetable matter, it's also uh, referred to as a VM. If you ever wondered what the heck does VM stand for, it means vegetable matter. If you've got vegetable matter in your wool, it usually when you felt it, it, it sort of works its way up to the to the top. So you don't have to worry um, about picking it out and sometimes destroying the whole of your make. Sorry, I just need to go around the head again. This It's pulled away from the edge. So I'm just adding a little bit more of that wool. So once you've done this, you need to lift it off the mat. And what you're doing next is um, just check if there's sort of a thin bit and there is actually on here. I'm just gonna um, put a bit more wool around the middle. I'll tell you one thing, if there was a thin bit around my middle, I definitely wouldn't add anything else to it. But no such luck in my case. I'm going to read in a minute what compliments you're fishing for because I maybe I was fishing for a compliment just then myself un, unknowingly 
Right, so you've got your um, fish, uh, your rough fish shape there now. And what you need to do um, now is you're actually going to cut around the outside. So you're cutting the excess water soluble paper off. So I need to do that. Do that as close as you can to your work. And um, this fish is not finished by any means. This is just the beginning. Go around the edges. This is where the little um, the little scissors come in really handy because they're they cut really really well. Um, they're very sharp. They're they're quite blunt, so it's not like you're suddenly going to poke yourself if if um, if that's something you're worried about. But they are um, they're really good to whiz around this water soluble shape. Right, so once you've done this, now um, you've got um, the wrong side and the right side, but you actually need both sides to be the same. And now you're going to start um, coloring in the other side as well. So same principle, this time I'm starting with the, with the, um, the fins. Felt this down, let it spill into the middle, same here. Establish that fin. Keep the fins nice and thin because we're not building bulk on the fins at all. They're, they're going to stay thin, whereas the rest of the fish, we're now building the body. So you're, what I do is I often sort of almost paint with wool and that makes sure that you get a nice thin layer all around. So you're now filling the other side in, colouring the other side in. And... In a minute, we're going to make sure that the two sides connect on the on the edges on the sides of the fish as well. Remember to peel it off your mat because it does get stuck to it. This is where you will end up with a very colorful mat with uh, some of the fibers that have gone through onto the other side. So keep lifting it off, and um, now you've got you've still got a flat fish with um, so wispy edges, which is fine. And you're going to continue um, in, that, in that exact same method, because we have to now cover the other side a little bit more again, but we're not touching, we're not adding any more wool onto the fins. Once you've done one layer on one side and you've done the other layer on the other side, that's, that's the layers done. Um, once you've covered the fish, now what we need to start doing is working on the on its 3 dness But first of all, to establish the, um, because it's a very fluffy, fussy little thing here at the moment, you could speed you could speed up your work by making it nice and nice and f and smooth by using the clover pen. I really like um, this clover tool. It has got five needles. I really like this because you don't need to have the brush mat with this. You can literally just felt into the fish and felt these fibers down and do this from both ends from both sides even. Felt it down, felt the fins down. So now it's it it is it's just created much a much faster solid piece of um uh, fabric there. You can also of course use the three needle felting tool that will speed things up. So you can use that and um I, I particularly I do I do I must say I do prefer the clover make. Um there's just something that feels a little bit more I don't know, polished, sophisticated, better quality, whatever you want to say. It you do you do pay more, but it 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 seems to be in my view, it seems to be worth it. So I've got, you've got a, a fluff fish here now, and now we're gonna start tucking the fluffy sides in. Uh, it is very fluffy. The um the flamingo is a, a mountain sheep which is also slightly coarser than the New Zealand merino or the Australian merino that you've got in um in your wool mix. But what you're doing now is you're sort of felting um, little batches around, um, felting them down around the edges first before fastening them down. And at some point you will get to a point where you actually felt into the sides of the fish because you're building up the shape of it now. You can stay within, remind yourself what your template looks like. I mean, by all means, you can even put it against the template in case you've lost the shape a little bit, then you know that you have to stab into the sides. And I'm not worried about these wispy ends here because they will be perfect to stab into the fish as soon as you build a body up here. They will be perfect to stab into the side of the fish. 
Now might be a good time to go to um, a slightly um, smaller needle. So I've used the coarse, standard um, coarse just then, but you could go to your um, orange needle, which is the medium size. And that will give you a little bit more. Um, it will just make sure that the fibers don't get stuffed, um, um, pushed through so far to the other side because we, we're try now trying to build um, a bulk. Um, we're trying to build a, a, a 3D body onto the fish. And um, we don't, we, we, we've done all the sort of establishing course work now. Now we are, we're, we're trying to do more delicate work by building a 3D body on the fish. There's no need to rush this. It will just happen. If you add wool onto the top every time, it will build bulk. That's just how it goes. And then stab into the side of the fish to maintain the shape so you don't end up with a, a shapeless fish. Um, you still got your scissors, so you could always um, cut around the shape as well again. And basically, it's just a question of adding wool, turning him round, adding wool, turning him round. Um, and, and that's what you do until you've got a nice fat little fishy there. Just in comparison, the fish that um, um, here is, is, is like that. And this fish is at the moment quite flat still. So we, we will get to um, that shape and then we'll, we will add these two um, fins on there um, separately. So that's a separate step of how to do this. Um, I'm just going to finish. I'm going to keep stabbing this fish. Um, but in the meantime, I'm also going to try and um, read some of the um, suggestions. I'll, I'll just keep keep the camera overhead because I, I don't want you to uh, miss out on anything that I'm doing here, even though I'm saying what well, all I'm doing is adding wool to one side and uh, stabbing it down, then turning it round and adding wool to the other side. In the meantime, I'm stabbing into the sides to um, make the body 3D. Um, so, Catherine, oh, Catherine, you've got the best name for this ever, um, of course. Catherine says, if I was fishing for compliments, really my surname, I would be, it would be from my boss who I have just sent a spreadsheet to that I've been working on the last couple of weeks, pulling in lots of data. Oh my God, how can you work for two weeks on a spreadsheet? I can't even work for two hours on one. <laughs> Does my head in. Oh, I, I tell you, honestly, this is a true story. I mean, you deserve every compliment in the world, Catherine. I, I have once looked at a spreadsheet, I think for about two or three hours. And after that, I just couldn't see anything at all. I, I just don't think that I'm my brain's geared to look at spreadsheets. I absolutely hate them. Um, Yeah, it's just, it's just not. If they made spreadsheets that didn't, they, they should make for spreadsheets with not letters and numbers. They should make it with fish symbols and bees and I'd be all right with that. I'm just looking at pictures all the time. Okay, there's a little bit of vegetable matter. That that mountain sheep's definitely been rolling around in the grass happily because there's always veg vegetable matter in the mountain sheep, even though it's gone through um, a washing, a carding and a dying process. Still got mountain sheep. Um, still got um, half a mountain in there actually. <laughs> Hilarious. Okay. The other day, my daughter, she said, Mom, do you know that some of the jokes you tell, they're not very funny? And I said, well, actually, do you know what? I don't tell jokes to make other people laugh. I, 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 if I find something funny, I say it because it makes me giggle. So there you go. If I don't come across very funny very often, then I don't, I don't really care. <laughs> I don't really care. <laughs> oh, some things are just really funny, though. Right. Stabbing my little fish. Um, at some point, you will add less bulk on the head than you add to the tummy. It's got a fat, full little little tummy. That was only one comment I um I read, so I'm gonna have to read another. But with that medium needle, I can I notice now that I'm 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 not sort of I'm, I'm more able to work on the shape to refine it more rather than. Every time I stab the coarse needle, the fibers would come out at the other end. And I'll need to really shape this fish by stabbing into the sides. Mind your fingers as you're doing this, because there is still not a lot of bulk to stab into. So, um, oh yeah, apparently Emma just said I've got very funny autocorrects. I, I swear there's a conspiracy against me um, when I type anything in on my, <laughs> on my phone. 
<laughs> the problem, of course, is that I never read anything before I press send or I read it and then it's too late and I have to send several, um, um, I need to make several edits on everything, but sometimes you just can't. So, um, yes, let's just, let's just go to the big camera so I can just show you the fish, how it's coming along. So it, it, it's getting there. It's actually quite solid. So these not often you get, um, we do things that are quite soft, but this will be a nice solid shape because you are, um, really literally sculpting, sculpting every layer by layer and um, adding another layer. So you're, you're not just starting out with a big bulk that you then felt and maybe not so felt felt so much on the in on the inside. This one is really quite solid. And I imagine that these little fishy garlands, they would look really nice in the bathroom or maybe in a kitchen. And um, of course you can color them in in a completely different way. You don't have to follow my um coloring, um, very complicated coloring um table, but um you can do it however you like. Um okay, let's just see what um fish what 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 uh, compliments people are going to what people what compliments people are fishing for oh people are not that com comfortable about um com compliments um oh um jane says she put the fiber from the mats in my garden in a tree birds love it for building nests absolutely perfect bridget says if i was fishing for compliments it would be how i lost weight during lockdown Oh my goodness, actually you did. That's amazing. Most people have done the opposite. Um, Diane says, well done. You've got that compliment from me. Um, Diane says, compliments on what well-mannered children I have or rounded adults as they are in their 30s now. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, you could, there's nothing ever that a mother wants to hear more than um, how how well how well their children have turned out. Yes. Um, uh I'm always fishing for compliments when I'm putting out my makes. Totally, absolutely, because we want to share our our um yeah, we want to share our joy. And then if people like it too, it's so nice to get a compliment. Um see see choices. I feel uncomfortable with compliments, but if I had to, I would like compliments on how healthy and happy my little furball kitty looks. Oh, bless you. So there's something about compliments that I've learned that um, sometimes you just have to, all you've got to say if somebody says something nice, there's there's nothing you need to say other than two words. And that's, thank you. That's all. That's it. You don't need to feel uncomfortable. You don't need to then say, oh, but, um, you know, it wasn't that difficult. Or, yeah, well, it was, it was all right. Let's just thank you. That'll do. Just say thank you. And, um, and take it. If somebody wants to pay you a compliment, then that's fine. Um, and all you need to say is thank you. There is, um, I we used to do an exercise when I worked in organizations, um, doing organizational development, and it's really hard for people just to say thank you when they receive a compliment. You can see their thoughts are coming through their minds, and they say, um, "Well, I only did that because, um, you know, that wasn't really me. It was da 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 da." da. And you think, "Come on, stop undermining yourself. Just say thank you." If somebody wants to pay you a com compliment, take it, take it, and. Don't ask any questions. Don't make any further compliments because then you're just embarrassing them. Um, just, just, just say thank you. That's it. It's hard, really hard, but um, you can do it. Um, Lorna says um, she's gonna make some of the little fishies when she's got some time. You reminded me, Lorna, of another Lorna who has just shared um, a wonderful. Um, um, stop motion with us. I, I did, I did share it on our Facebook page because it just melted my heart. It, it is already, um, it's from last Christmas, but I missed it somehow. I had no idea it was happening, but it's this lovely lady also called Lorna and she does, um, ch children book, she writes children books and does the illustrations for it. And it's, um, it's a little bear, little bear's Christmas. Um, and, and she's needle felted the whole, it's, it's also worse. If you look at the YouTube channel, it's called Toots Design. Have a look at, um, how she's made the, <laughs> how she's made it. And she was saying that some, some, you know, it's a little bit like with, um, with, um, other stop motion, um, recordings where you sometimes you spend a few hours on just recording eight seconds and I think that ha happened to her too with a particularly tricky scene but she needle felted all of the characters which include um, the bear 
um, and she used all of our wool, of course. So um, you can you can do a little bit of wool spotting if you like as well. The the mouse she needle felted the mouse, a squirrel, a badger, a hedgehog. Um, I'm probably missing some, but I can't think now. Um, did I say squirrel? Yes, I did. So she needle she needle felted all of these, and um, I I just absolutely love it. It's just the the, what she had to go through to get the lighting right and she's written this beautiful um, poem to go with it um, to it's 10 minutes long but if you have if you've got 10 minutes in your life or even if you especially if you haven't got 10 minutes of your life take 10 minutes and you will feel so much better for watching it it is absolutely beautiful it's got the be most beautiful music that she uh, commissioned to be composed as well and um, it's it's just absolutely perfect it's it has got little imperfections in it, but they make it absolutely perfect at the same time. So it's a beautiful, beautiful video. You must you must go and watch it. Um, I'm hoping that Emma will share the link. But it is by Toots Design, T-O-O-T-S. And um, it is on YouTube. So if you just put in um, Toots Design on YouTube, you should get it. And of course, please give us the thumbs up, all of you who are watching. Um, let us know that... Um, let not just us let our let other people know that you like this video that it has helped you in one or another way join our everyone a makeup pa uh, facebook group um we just asked three questions please do answer them um we i hate to to not accept people because they haven't answered any questions um they're not bad questions we don't ask you anything um terrible we just need to know that you understand that you are joining this group because you love us of course and um um, so yes, please do join the group. We're we're nearly we've nearly got four thousand members. We've got um, over nine thousand followers on our Facebook page now, and we're working hard to get our um, Instagram up. And of course, if you can see, we are on Facebook with Squiggly Bit the Makers with two S's dot dot uk, and on Instagram and Twitter we're just Squiggly Bit the Makers. And um, that would be great if you could give us a a like. Right, that fish is definitely growing in size now. Um, that uh, mountain sheep is very coarse, but I'm going to persevere as I have done with the others. It will look fine. So the, the two mountain sheep wools that you've got in, in this exotic wool mix is the aqua, which is that light color, and the flamingo. And um, he's definitely getting there. So he's a little bit fatter already, you can see. He's getting there. Need a bit more tummy uh, weight around his tummy. He's, for some reason, he's a bit more narrow as well. But that will just happen with your little fishes. They might turn out a little bit. Um, some of them might turn out um, bigger than the others. Just keep adding little wads of wool around the areas that you want to build up. Felt it up in around the edges first and then felt the, um, the middle down. You can also make... I'm just going to go to the overhead camera so I can show you what I'm talking about. So if you if you know you want to build up a tummy here, so this area, let's do it on this side, you could um, take your wool and tear it into smaller portions so that you've got you've got a, a little wad here, what I call a wad, and you can lay that very um, on onto the very place where you want it to build up. So then you step into the edge first, so you're not flattening the uh, the bit that you've just laid on there. Remember, the head needs to stay a bit flatter than the body. It's got like a little pot-bellied fish that we're trying to make. And of course, the tail isn't growing thicker um, as much as the tummy either. So the tail should probably even be thinner than the um, head. And once you've felted this on, then you can felt into it um, to uh, felt it down. But you've maintained the shape of what you're trying to um, add bulk to. And keep doing that. Keep repeating it. Stab a bit more into the head to keep that flatter, and just make sure that the body um, is more bulging, and um, and then that will see your first fish being born quite quickly. You can go to a, um, a smaller needle. So this is a perfect example to uh, demonstrate why you go from um, a coarse needle to a medium to a fine needle. Um, because you you still you can still work on shaping, but because the wool gets tighter and tighter, felted down, it becomes harder and harder to push the needle in. And then if you have to push it in really hard, you, all you're doing is push the fibers out the other side, and then instead of defluffing your fish, you're going to fluff it up a little bit more. So I'm building another um, bit of tummy 
tummy bulk here around that side and felt that down again around the edges first mind your fingers and then um, step into it as you're doing it that eventually it, it it will just it will literally just build up the bulk even though you you think of just added another flat piece it will build up the bulk it does happen it what I always find is with a fish you see that oh one side suddenly is bigger than the other oh I've got to do the other side and so that is definitely um, a, a result remember our felting needles are in sub club this um, month in May so if you don't know what sub club is you probably don't know what our subscription boxes are we do have three different subscription boxes in May we have got the three little piggies um, that's the main makers box which we've been doing for four years and um, is our pop most popular box we have got um, our fairy subscription box that um, there's seasonal fairies um, that that come out every month and we have also got our surprise box where um, we fill it with lush lush fibers and other things and leave it to you to um, see what you can um, do with it they are themed so this month um, box is um, paint a picture the surprise box the fairy box is the emerald fairy and the as I said the ma main makers box is the three piggies and what has that got to do with sub club it just means if you're a subscriber you get an exclusive code that only works as you are a subscriber and you get um, special discounts on um, uh, different products every month and and it is a lot of um, collections that are available for you to save money um, because we just want to say thank you for being a subscriber you already get your subscription box at a, at a really really com um, competitive price compared to what you would pay for a kit of that size and um, um, standing so yeah we just we just we love to have people on board who are committed and want to learn new techniques and um, share what they've made and um, yeah, all of that. Right, I think my fish is fat enough now. So what I'm going to do now is, um, first of all, I need to needle felt a couple of separate fins that are going onto the um, onto each side of the fish. And um, they're go actually going here at the back. And for this, I'm just going to take a wisp of, um, as you know, it's the neon pink because that's that's what, I've worked out needs to happen and I'm literally just felting a f um, felting this flat on my mat into I don't know in, into a fin shape <laughs> it's like an oval oval type thing I'm trying to keep the needle um, relatively um, um, in control so not stabbing all the way through to the other side um, this is also a good time to change to your fine needle which is in our in our uh, standard needle set is the green one and then all you need to do is attach that to one side of the fish so I'm just literally stabbing that in there letting the fibers sink into the side of the body so they're, they're, that sort of adds to the 3D-ness of the fish and then I'm making the other fin in exactly the same way I'm actually starting out with my fine needle now just tucking the fibers in as I'm going. You really don't want to felt this really deeply into the mat because you, you won't get it off otherwise. So peel it off, stop the other side. <coughs> Excuse me. And then felt that on to the other side by just stubbing the wispy fibers into the side of the fish. And these should be sort of like sticking out, not not quite sticking out, but they should be slightly um, on the side of the fish so that it's like a 3D, 3D fins here on either side. And now we're going to color in the um, the eyes and we put the um, the gills, the gill line here as well. So because I'm doing a neon um, pink, no, I'm not doing, I'm doing a flamingo um, colored fish. I need to now neon yellow. Um, I need that for the eyes and the gills. So just a tiny amount and um, you're going to put sort of a fish eye in there. 
and all I'm doing is I just lay the wool on there and I keep stabbing consistently in a, in a, in a circular line and it's tucking the fibers in and the last bit I'm just folding inward. Now there's a, there's a good trick if you've got a few wispy fibers and you, you need to catch them but just stabbing them, your needle just doesn't get them because the fibers are too coarse. You just twizzle them around your, the tip of your needle like you would twizzle spaghetti onto your fork. And then you can ca catch them and just stab them in as you've caught them on, on the end of your um, needle with the notches at the end of the needle. And then you do the same on the other side. Remember to put the eye um, roughly in, <laughs> into the same place so you don't have a wonky, wonky fish. And just stab that consistent circle, tuck in the fibers on the inside. So you don't even need to pre-shape it or anything in your hand. Just stab the circle, make a small disc. Don't Again, use your fine needle because you don't want to stab too deep and um, catch all the fibers coming out at the other side. That's not as round as the other one. That's not very satisfying. Add a bit more. Make that a little bit rounder. It's only a little fish, but it actually it does take a little bit of work. Um, as you've got eight colors in your wool mix you can make eight different colored fish and um, they each weigh four grams and there are forgotten out what did we work out you can make 24 fish that's what I've worked out but I can't remember how I worked it out um, so you have got a flamingo colored fish neon pink fins and the eyes and the gills are um, yellow and the inside of the eye is um, the pupil if you like is also neon uh, pink so you're going to have to make a, um, a spot inside the yellow by felting um, pink into there. I just worked out this plan so that every color gets used in every in in the whole of, of the eight fish. So there is a there is sort of a formula to it, if you like. If you lay the colors out in a certain way, you always go to the one either in front or behind um, to and then we just need to put that line in, which is also yellow. It, it definitely works to ha have a list um, because you forget. Otherwise, what was I meant to be using again? So that curves um, that way. So you're going that way. And um, I guess when, when I've finished with this little fish, um, we can um, announce a winner. So this today, the winner will be announced, um, well, the winner will be drawn at random by Emma. On Thursday, it will be Hannah. And um, we'll announce the winner in a minute when I've finished the fish. And um, maybe I have time to start a second one. But um, we'll, we'll definitely get the winner on the way in, in a few minutes. So just... Um, hang in there patiently because you might you might um, get one of those magnetic caddies in a minute so you can see now I've built up so much bulk that I have, can comfortably stab into um, the underneath of the fish and into the top of it as well the wool has been built up and you can now neaten out um, any wispy bits that are still sticking out you can do that you can even stab into the face of the fish to sort of make a line for a mouth. That's entirely up to you. If you want that detail, it can be right in the center of the face or just below. And then you've only got to make seven more. And then you've only got to make um, 16 more if you want to use up all of your wool mix after you've made seven more. So the, with a fine needle, I can now um, make a few changes. And, and so the fish in theory is ready now. And I didn't bring any, um, well, I have got water here, but you're not going to see anything happening. So I'm not going to um, use it. But all you need to do now is you can dip the fin, the, the thinner fins, not this one because you felted these on separately, but you can dip this fin, this fin, and even the tail into a bowl of water and rinse them the paper out which um, will basically means that you have a thinner finish and let's just see um, if I can show you this on 
uh, it's really hard. I mean, can you see how stiff that is now? Because that has got the water soluble paper, um, the residue is left in there, which makes it makes it stiff, but it also makes it really thin. So you can do that if you want to, or you can just leave it as it is. You don't have to rinse the water out. It looks absolutely fine like that. And then what I have done is I have used our new rainbow sparkly thread. Love this. It's uh, it's not a strong thread, so you can't sort of, I, don't, I wouldn't um, hang a picture on the wall with it, but it's perfectly fine to string the fish together. And what I what I have done is I've I've literally thread threaded the thread through the hole of the fish, so you can see it here. This is the fish is um, it's literally this is the string going from through the mouth all the way coming out between the two tail fins. And um, and that is how you would string up a whole um, garland of fish um, with that sparkly thread, which looks like shimmery water. It's really nice, I love this one. So there's your little fishy, ready to swim away. Um, and um, looks like a salmon. There you go, you can make lots more. Um, just, um, yeah, just by using this technique that I've just shown you. There you go. So um, we're ready to um, to draw a winner now. Um, I did want to share something else with you, which is, oh yes, um, we have got lots of live streams coming up. While, whilst Emma is um, drawing a winner, I'm just going to show you what the next week live stream is. is um, is the last one for May, which is the um, truck. And the truck, obviously, we're in preparation maybe for the ponies or maybe you already need it for the piggies from the subscription box or maybe you just need a truck in your life. You can have one now. It's um, it, it, it's next Tuesday, which is the um, 25th of um, May. We will be doing the needle felted truck. And um, and then we have got coming up in June. The 1st of June is the unwrapping of the subscription boxes. So we won't have a live stream for uh, a make along on that day. But then the next one, which is the 8th of June, you can uh, join me to make a dragonfly. You will All you will need is a, a length of pipe cleaner, about 10 centimeters. You will need some Angelina fibers, which are heat bondable. So you need to be able to iron them. And then you just need some um, wool, wool top. So it's a, as Emma would call it, a stash buster. Uh, remember, you can get fibers and including luxury fibers with our special Mayhem code, um, which is Mayhem2, all capital letters, um, number two straight after on our website. It also tells you on the banner of the website, only valid until the 23rd of um, May. On the 15th of June, we are doing a beehive from, and all of the uh, wool that you can see in this picture has been used from the bees mix. A wool mix which is um, a massive stash of 140 grams of wool and this bee constellation that you can see there the hive with the bees only weighs about 30 grams so you've got plenty of um, so you have you've got you've got lots of um, wool in there to do it and then um, we've got finally um, two a part a part two no a two part make along which is the uh, peacock butterfly from our peacock butterfly kit and I can show you that um, for real in a minute and it is here there. that's the kit you can get um, to make the butterflies it makes two so you could make one with me and one on your own or maybe you make one on your own first and then make one with me and that is for the last two Tuesdays in June so that's all of the June live streams sorted just as a as a um, sneaky little um, preview um, July is all about seaside and fish and um, the surprise box is called fish and chips and we will have lots of um, sea and sea creature related live streams um, as part of our small kit launch that is happening um, this month already so we will be looking at starfish and and others and um, that's happening in July and the winner is for today's which is today's live stream which is the um, 18th of May 2021 is Kathy F you've won yourself um, a magnetic um, needle picker is that what you call it? Pick pick me up, and um, that will get go in the post to you. If you could drop us a line by email info at the makers with two s's dot co dot uk. So Kathy F, that's you. If um, if you're um, listening still. 
please do drop us a line and let us know that you've won today. On Thursday, it will be a different winner. I wish I could look into the future um, and could tell you who that is. But whoever that is will be announced by Hannah in the comments on the Facebook group, on the Facebook um, chat, which is um, it will be live streamed on our Facebook page, not in our group. So that's the that's the that's this one here, not this one themakers.co.uk that's our uh, Facebook handle it's I know it looks like a web address but it's actually our Facebook handle and uh, what else was I going to say now uh, oh, there was something else oh yes and the, the the stupid thing is what I've done is me I'm being stupid is that I said oh I'm gonna this is what people can win um, and and I've taken the two purple ones um, because I work from home a lot of the time I've taken these home with me so and I'm not actually going to be back in until Monday next week so please um, cut Please forgive us that we can't literally send this out the next day because I've I've got them I've I've got them, and um, I will uh, make sure that they get back. Um, this is this is the purple one. If you're happy with another color, then we can send um, another color. But these are the two last purple ones that I've bagged um, to to uh, reserve for this live stream. But if you're happy with a different color one, then just let us know and um, they can be posted to you. And um, I think that's all I've got to say have I mentioned oh I've got something else something else that's not live on our website yet but it will be very soon so you know we do these little crowns this one here actually has got a little bit of felt around the edge oh, I've just got to show you an overhead camera so we do these little crowns but they're actually really titchy and I don't know if you remember we did a, um, a live stream on um, in fact Sophie did that on how to make the three the three kings and um, and and the crowns sort of fit on there well we have finally found some crowns that are bigger. I'm so pleased about this because look, these are perfect. They're, they're, they're actually big enough to fit my middle finger. Um, probably my ring. Um, I won't go through all the fingers because it might get stuck. But um, they are also big enough. They are perfect fit for our six millimeter pectors, whatever shape or size you want. They have a really good, they're really good fit. Anything smaller than that and they slip through. But that is a perfect fit. You will have to obviously glue it on because it just sort of slips around. But it is a perfect fit, fit to anything um, six millimeter, whether it's a, um, a, a cil cylinder cone or um, um, oh, whatever, whatever the shapes are, like an angel shape or a straight shape um, or um, this sort of slightly round shape. Anything six millimeter or bigger, which is um, this one would look. I think that would look really uh, much better than the little crown. So I'm really pleased about these crowns. They're really heavy. If you're putting them on a, they're, they're, they're solid metal. If you're putting them onto um, a fairy, just be, be mindful that this probably weighs more than the whole fairy, but it will fit on a fairy. You just need to be mindful that if you're hanging it normally up on a really delicate thread, then um, you might have to use a slightly stronger thread um, to hold the crown as well. So yeah, I'm really loving it. But I've I've had um, the crown had its first outing on um, the the frog that's going into the needle felted fairy folk book um, as a and I did try and kiss the frog, but nothing happened. I was waiting for the prince to emerge and uh, didn't happen. Probably saw me legged it the other way. So anyway, this is um, this is the crown that I, I'm really pleased about. You see. I get pleased by just little things. Doesn't need to be anything big. <laughs> little things make me happy. So these are these make me happy. These crowns. So hopefully they will make you happy too when they are ready to buy, which I am hoping will happen this week. Hopefully by Thursday, if you're watching this, they might already be live. And remember that we have um, the um, live tutorial, live stream tutorial. Is, is everything stays on YouTube. So if you've missed anything, you can always go back. And we have got. Um, bugs in the mugs left left so you can get your bug in the mug pack to um, make your bug and you get our mug to go with it and these are really they're really fun little creatures and they make beautiful little presents as well we've also got the wet felted flower tutorial is still available with um, the lovely uh, wool tops that you can also use for fairies remember that pack is in um, in the mayhem discount code included so you can get now, if you weren't able to afford it before, you can definitely go and get it now. And I think that's pretty much it. We are sort of, um, we're booked in for two shows in July. For the, These are our first potential face-to-face -face shows. We'll see how that goes. Fingers crossed, fingers, toes, and everything else crossed. Um, uh, one is the Craft for Crafters show at West 
I nearly said Westminster. <laughs> no, we haven't elevated to Westminster yet. Uh, West Point in Exeter, which is taking place. Um, it's a midweek show. That's unusual for um, for any shows, but it is from Wednesday until Friday, the 13th to the 16th or the 14th to the 16th, something like that, of July. And then we're going for the first time, we're going to the Festival of Quilt quilts i think in um at the nec at the end of july so if you want to if you want to see us in person after all these months and months and months or maybe for the first time get your tickets now so that um yeah we can at least wave at you maybe we might even hug you who knows we'll see um and um i'm really looking forward to just seeing people in the flesh again and um anyway stop waffling now Take care, everybody. Have a good uh, rest of the day and rest of the week. And uh, we'll be here back again next week. Share share your um, fishies with us. Definitely. Bye.